give it up one more time for the worship team. Woo! Yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. We're glad that you're here today. Glad that you're here today. Y'all all right out there? You a little quiet, a little sleepy on me? Hey, you won't be asleep for long, so you know. I wore my special pink pants, and when I wear my pink pants, that means I'm on fire. That means, hey, that means I'm trying to get y'all hyped up today and encourage you. And for those of you, uh, maybe you just want to catch up on what's been going on lately. Uh, we've started this sermon series. Actually, today is our last day to close it out called Summer Baggage. And I've had so many people say, this has just been a great, great sermon series. We've covered a lot of things over the last few weeks. Thank you for my luggage there. Uh, and <laughs> so uh, we talked a lot about how in life, you know, we pick up different things, don't we? Offense. Come on, somebody. Some of you still holding on to some offense. So you've, been, you've been holding on to that bad boy for years. It's weighing you down. Maybe it's unforgiveness. We talked about anger. We talked about forgetting our past. We talked about guilt last week. Man, that was, it was quiet in here on that one. I'm just going to say I left here thinking, man, I must have done terrible because these people didn't say two words. Uh, we talked about that last week, and it just felt like, you know, if it's not for anybody else, this is for me today, so just, just bear with me. But hopefully you all can relate. But today I want to talk about anxiety and a little bit of depression, if I could. If I could just break it down for you today, because uh, how many of you know it's heavy? It's heavy, and we live in such a crazy world, and society we live in is go, 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 do, 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 and, and it's, uh, it's, it's, before you know it, you're just overwhelmed. Anybody feel, well, you don't have to raise your hand, because everybody know you're overwhelmed, but it's a lot going on, and if you're teachers, you work in the school system, you know, you got, you're kind of getting back in the groove, and you know, it's a little anxiety with that. What's this year going to look like? If you got kids, you're like, praise God, they're going back to school. But, but we want to we wanna talk about it today. And so I'm going to look at a couple different passages. But one I know you'll be familiar with is Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 4 through 8. And then also 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. And so if you could get that out or look at the screen, do something. Talk to me a little bit. Y'all ready to go? Say, yelp. Okay, Philippians 4, chapter 4 says this, Rejoice in the Lord sometimes. <laughs> and it says rejoice, doesn't say complain. It says uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Verse 5 says, let your gentle, gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Then comes verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Oh, and the peace of God. Oh, I love the peace of God. The peace of God will transcend all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, like it's excellent. If it's praiseworthy, he says, think on those things. Are you okay? We're going to move on. First John chapter 5, verse 4. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Can I just stop right there? Because there are times where we feel like we can't overcome what we're facing. We feel like it is too heavy that there's no way we can overcome it. And the anxiety creeps in, and come on, and the heaviness. But I just want to just say right there, when I read that, I was like, yes, come on. That, it, that we can overcome. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Man, we are overcomers. I started to title that about being overcomers, but I think I used that before. So I thought... You know, I was going around the house, and my husband was looking at me like I was crazy. I'm like, I've got the power. And I was dancing. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. It's getting, it's getting, right? And he was like, what? And I was singing the song, I've got the power. So if you don't remember anything else today, remember this crazy preacher in the pink pants telling you, I've got the power. I want you to know you've got the power. 
It may be getting, getting, getting kind of hectic, but you've got the power to overcome any lies, anything that the enemy's playing you with. Because I believe he's playing with a lot of us, and he's trying to shut us up, tear us down. But I want to let you know we have the power to overcome. So can we pray again? Yes, we sure can. Let's pray. Lord God, we need you this very moment. We need your word to come to life. We need someone who has just been, man, they've been knocked down by one situation after the next. Lord, I ask that you would raise them up today. I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, that we would feel lighter going out than we did coming in. And I pray, Lord, that we would keep the scripture in our mind even this week. Lord, when we become anxious, that so we would know what the Apostle Paul said. Do not be anxious about anything. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give us peace as we focus on our thoughts. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. Have you ever, 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 ever felt down, discouraged? Have you ever felt like there's no hope? Have you ever felt like, man, this battle is too big for me to fight. Have you ever felt, Lord, why am I going through this now? I can't handle this. Again, I just got through this one thing, and now this has come again. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been so depressed that you had all you could do to get out of bed? Have you ever doubted God? Yeah, we can be real, y'all. Come on. Have you ever felt like, man, God, like, where are you in this situation? He says, I need you right now. But it just felt like the more that you prayed, the more it was quiet. The more you felt anxious, the more you were down and depressed. And, oh, this is the best one. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. It'll never work out. It's too hard. I don't know why I tried. I don't know why I thought that, you know, I was going to be the one that was going to be able to pull through this because my life has just always been that way. You know, just been one thing after next. Everybody else gets this handed to them, that handed to them at work. But, you know, when it comes to me and my situation, I'm always the one. I'm the one that's alone. And everybody else has their hubby, their spouse that didn't pass away. And, and look at their family. But my family's all messed up. My kids are everywhere and this, that, and the other. I can't even get them to come over and have dinner with me. Have you, am I, is, have you ever been there? It's lies that the enemy tells us, and we believe them. And some of you are so overwhelmed today because of the lies that you're listening to, the things that the enemy is telling us. But one thing in particular that he's telling us is that there is no hope. He doesn't like for us to have any kind of hope whatsoever. He wants us to be blue, and he wants us to be down. He doesn't want us to get hype. He just, he just wants to keep us defeated, and he wants us to tell us things that, that it will never work out. But I'm this kind of person that even in the darkest hour, like, just give me a little bit of hope on something I can hold on to. Like, I'm the kind of person, I don't mind being in the cave if I got to be in the cave, God. But, you know, just dang a little carrot in front of me or something, like, you know, to get me through that, that I'm going to get to the promised land when I get out. Like, I, I just need something, you know, to hold on to. And I'm the kind of person that I'll get knocked down sometimes pretty bad. And the Lord will allow the Lord. The enemy will like to keep me down sometimes. And it's okay to feel that way sometimes. But I tell you what. When I get up, come on, when I get up, when I say enough is enough, I am not who this enemy is telling me I am, that I am somebody through Christ Jesus. When I understand that I have the power, that he says those that believe in Jesus Christ can overcome. If that don't give you some hope today, I don't care what I do care, what you're going through but I want to let you know that no matter how bad it is, no matter how depressed you may feel, no matter how much energy you don't have today, I just want to let you know that you have the power to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You have the power. So whatever hope that you feel is lost, I want to give you a little hope today. I want to give you a little hope that Jesus cares. I want to give you a little hope that, that even in your worst, darkest night and darkest hours of your life, 
He cares, and he sees, and he knows what's going on. And he says, oh, today I just want to come at 1108 today and just give you a little bit of something and give you a little bit of hope that the thing that you're anxious about, I already know about. I already know about it, and I'm there with you. But boy, does the enemy like to tell you that nobody's there for you. He likes to tell you there's no hope. But come on, how many of you are feeling better already today? How many of you know that the Lord has been good? How many of you know that there's, gonna, there's a way out, that you can't overcome the situations that you're going through today? And I also want to let you know that I'm not here to just pamp it on, the, like, just pat it on the back and say, oh, anxiety, and, you know. No, I want to tell you it's real. I want to tell you that depression is something that so many people across America struggle with and suicidal thoughts. You know, if we could just be right, you know, can we just, I'm telling it like it is because that's why we're in the house of the Lord today. We're not here because we got it perfect and we're great people. I mean, you try to be, but, but we're here because we need help. We're here because some of us have had weeks. We're here because some of us have months. And it feels like we've been on the battlefield forever. And we're tired and we're weak. Have I, can, can, are you glad that you came to church today? And so Philippians in, in chapter 4, it's good stuff, man. He, he gives us, Apostle Paul gives us a prescription of how we can deal with anxiety. And first he's like, I'm going to start off with a couple things. And he throws out the first couple of verses, like here's some things I want you to do. And then he gives us some prescriptions of like, hey, this is when anxi- I don't want you to be anxious. And then he tells us what we need to do not to be anxious. So are you ready to, to go there today? I said, are you ready to go there today? You've had enough and you're tired and you want to let this mess go. Are you, are you ready? All right, the first thing I want you to know, if you're taking notes today, because I know you are, because you cool like that and you need this this week because I'm going to tell you the enemy will fight. Are you ready? Number one, return to joy. It says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We have to rejoice means that we need to return to joy. We need to return to joy. I want to know, when's the last time that you had a little joy in your life? When's the last time that you laughed so hard you about wet your pants? When's the last time that you just had fun? Some of you have spent a long time. Because there is is this thing in her mind, this this force of, 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 you know, of our emotions that, that we are just becoming this way and that way and it's hard but have you ever tried to just laugh like if you just try to make yourself laugh like just you know and before you know it it's contagious right and you know it, you feel a little better inside some of you feel better since you came in right you feel better inside do you need a good laugh because it's something that we can't have to work on because in this world it's fearful it pulls us and we drift away and the enemy's trying to torment us but i want you to know today that you can overcome despite how painful your situation may be. It's a lot of times how people deal with anxiety and depression in the society we live in is they numb their emotions. Well, if I can just, I'll just have a drink, you know? One drink, at least three drinks, four drinks, five drinks. Well, you know it, you ain't talking at all, brother. And it works for a while. Numbs your emotions for a while. But the next day, that emotion is still going to be there. Next day, in fact, because you drank something, you probably, I'm just saying, y'all, you're probably going to have even more anxiety that comes. And more depression that comes. Because it may make you feel good in that moment, but afterwards it doesn't. Can I get a witness? And before you know, you're going to Because we try to comfort ourselves by doing these things. But the reality of it is, Paul is saying, we've got to return to joy, folks. We've got to get some happiness back in our life. we got some joy back in our life. And the whole human brain is designed from joy. From the bottom to the top of your brain, it's a joy-seeking machine. So when you leave today, find something funny, something that you can laugh about. Get with your family. Find something. Man, life's too short. I went to a funeral yesterday. Well, I did a funeral yesterday, and one of the ladies that spoke said, you know, this world would be different if everybody just loved each other a little more and had some joy. 
But we're too busy fighting with everybody and getting so anxious about everything. Who upset because somebody didn't call and didn't say this? She said, we need to get some love and some joy back into this world. And I believe it to be true. Number two, if you're taking notes, I got four things today. I switched it up. Uh -huh. You thought I was going with the three. I went to the four. I almost went to the five. But I thought I'd lose you, so I just stuck with the four. Number two, moderation is mandatory. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And then verse 5, I want to go over to King James Version, if I could, and just point out this is what that verse says. It says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. See, the word moderation has everything to do with forbearance. And forbearance has everything to do with balance. See, that's what we're missing is balance. We wonder why we're stressed out, because we have no balance in our life. Can I get an amen? You know when you go to extremes in your life and those excessive behavior patterns, they lead to an anxious time. Because I just want you to know, you may feel like you are one woman, you may feel like you are Superman and you can do everything, but I've come to learn and find out, thank God, after 48 years, that I can't do everything. It's called balance. Some of you stressed out because you got kids all over the place. You got kids involved in this sport and that sport and this sport and that sport, and that's good. But we wonder why we're so stressed out. See, see, two days ago, you were in North Carolina at a tournament, and then next week, you got to go across the bridge to another tournament, and you're so tired, you have all you can do, and you ain't seen your spouse in two weeks. Come on, and you're barely getting your work done at work. In fact, you probably haven't been there much, and then you wonder why you're so stressed out because there is no balance. And I found myself in ministry time after time, learning how to balance. I'm still learning, folks. I, I, I want to do everything for everybody. Everybody will call, I want this, I need this, and they get mad when you don't answer the phone in the middle of the night. I, I can't be everything for everybody, right? I'm learning now. I want to be, but I'm learning in ministry you can't. You can't do things for everybody all the time because what's going to happen is you're going to get burnt out. Right? You're going to get burnt out. And, I'm, and then you have family at home. Like, when are you coming home? Right? When are you coming home? You know? And so it's learning balance. It's something that we all need to do. Right? No matter. You may say, I got to go to gym eight days a week. Well, honey, you need to balance. Right? You need to give a little bit. Eat yourself a donut. It might make you feel better. But you, you need balance. We all need balance in our life. There's no moderation. Going here and going there, going to extreme causes an anxious mind. He says we need balance. Take a day off. Some of you are like, what? I haven't had a day off. I ain't got time to take a day off. Well, the other day I was late. I woke up and I said, uh, I could feel it. I said, you know, I'm getting a little, a little burnt, a little burnt. So... I'm going to go get myself a cup of coffee, get myself, had a funeral this week, got a, you know, it's just been, it's been crazy, had one yesterday, got to get ready for the day, had a national night out this week, come on, y'all know, you were here with me, and I thought, slow down, just take yourself an hour, get yourself together, I can't prepare for a message if I'm going 100 miles an hour, right? just balance, maybe for some of you, you can't take a day off, but maybe you could take 10 minutes. Maybe you could stop the rise up on your way to work. Yeah, your pastor told you to. Take, take time for yourself. Because I knew that if I didn't take that hour, I would be no good on Sunday morning. I would be no good at the funeral when I went in. Come on. I had to take care of myself. See, if we got to do things in moderation, folks. I believe that God wants us to enjoy our kids and our family and our jobs. But if we don't, we don't take the time for ourselves, I mean, the Lord himself took a Sabbath. You know, it's like he was trying to tell us something. You need time for yourself. And the more I do that, if you don't mind, the more I can come in here and be filled and wear my pink pants and get excited about the Lord and who he is and what he's done for myself. But I'm finding, I'm learning that I have to do this called self-care. I'm learning, y'all. I mean, I got a long ways to go. But some of you, that's what's wrong with you. That's why you're so stressed out all the time. Working four jobs, you know. I mean, it's a lot. But it's learning to balance everything. It's learning to take time for yourself, whatever that may look like. For some, it could be a day off. For others, it might be just 10 minutes in the bathroom with no kids. You know, it's, it's learning 
that we got to do that. Then he tells us the next verse, don't be anxious about anything. I looked up the Greek word for anxiety. If I could pronounce it, I would, but I can't, so I'm going to move on. But this is what it means. It means to tear your mind apart. And some of you, that's what's going on in your mind. You're tearing your mind apart because of the anxiety that is going on. It's, it's tearing your mind apart. He says, don't worry about anything. That's telling me that my boy Paul understands something. He knows something about uh, what it's like to be anxious. He knows what it does to our mind. He knows what it does to our heart and our spirit. And he's saying, you know, you all got to not be anxious And I know what you're thinking is, what is he smoking? What do you mean not be anxious? Does he not know? Does the Lord not know everything I have going on? See, anxiety is a thief. It steals your thoughts. Amen. Steals your peace. It steals your confidence. And it steals your joy. Y'all okay? It's true. It's a thief that the enemy, the enemy comes and he uses anxiety. And that's what's wrong with some of you today. You can barely smile walking in here. Can I share a story with you because it's a good time to lighten things up? A woman couldn't sleep because she was worried and afraid that her home would be burglarized. And then she, it just, that thought haunted her day after day, week after week, year after year. She was so worried. She kept telling her husband, we're going to have someone break in our house. I just know it. I just know it. So one night, she heard something downstairs. And she woke up and she told her husband, she said, you got to go check it out. I hear somebody in the house. Thank you. Can torment you for the rest of your life. So that's why we've got to stop being so anxious. See, anxiety is, is not about the past as much as it is about you using your past to torment your future. It's, it's what we, it's anxiety is imagining these negative results. And so what I've learned is if your mind can do this, if your mind can create anxiety, then it also can and learn how to resist it. And so we've got to learn that. We've got to learn to resist it. We've got to learn and be willing to put the hard work in. And we're designed to overcome, just so you want, you know, just so you know, we can overcome this. So he says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, he says, what? Prayer. We got to pray. Right? Some translators say supplication, right? He also says, petition, make yourself known. He says, with thanksgiving. But isn't it like the enemy to come into our heart when anxiety comes and and depression comes and what we want to give up when it gets in our heart? You know, y'all ain't rolled out of work, been like, man, I ain't going this place no more. Y'all don't get like that? I couldn't tell you. I'm being real. I can't tell you how many Sundays I rolled out of here. I ain't never going back there no more. I'm done, Lord. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it, right? Because that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to give up. And every time I feel like I could give up, I say, "Uh uh-uh, because my breakthrough, that means my breakthrough's right there. That, That means that you're so close. And we've got to learn to push through because this is what I've learned. Number three, when you give up, you shut up. When you give up, you shut up. And so how can we make our petition and our requests and our prayer and our thanksgiving be known to God when we shut up? 
You see, that's what the enemy wants us. He wants us to be on shut up mode. Some of you have been on on a little mute mode, right? Your batteries don't run out. And you haven't opened your mouth in forever. And you haven't prayed. And you haven't given thanksgiving to God because you want to give up. But I, like I said before, I might be down for a while. But when I come up, come on, somebody. Come on. I'm, I'm a fighter. I'm an overcomer. I, I can overcome anything that's come against me. Come on, and you can too. But, but we've got to learn to open our mouth. He wants to shut us up. He doesn't want you to pray. He doesn't want you to give God praise and thanksgiving because you've had a bad day. You've had a bad year. Things never work out for you. He, he wants to shut you up. But if you would just take out a piece of paper, come on, when you feel that way, and perhaps a pen or a pencil, and just take a minute and start looking back. See, we know we have a hard time to do that when things are bad. We don't want to look bad because we have all we could do to look forward. But if we would just take a minute and remember how the hand of God has been upon our life. We may feel overwhelmed now, but wasn't there a time in your life where you prayed like you never prayed before? Wasn't there a time in your life where you also were overwhelmed and you looked like you were looking at a mountain, didn't know what to do, but 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 God came through. It might have took forever. You might have felt terrible, but he came through. See, if we would just learn to get a little thanksgiving back in our life, a little gratitude back in our life, if we would just take a minute when we feel overwhelmed and feel depressed and say, you know what? God has been too good. But what the enemy does is he tells tells us how bad it is, and he wants us to give up and shut up and not say a word to anybody about Jesus and not say a word about being things. Can we complain about everything? My stupid car, it's always been a problem. I don't know why I bought this thing. It's terrible. It's terrible on gas, and, and I got to get new brakes, and I got to get new tires, and it just never ends. Instead of saying, God, thank you that I have this car. Because I prayed for this kind of car for a long time, but I forgot what it was like not to have a car. And so, so what happens is we begin to praise God for things. We begin to look back and think of the many times that he's come through for us. And see, that's what keeps us going. And that's how we can go in our prayer closet, right? And, and when we go in our prayer closet, sometimes we don't know what to pray. And sometimes we're like, oh, I don't know what to pray. I've prayed everything, God. I've prayed for so long. I don't hear you. I don't see you. I'm just going to give up right now. But, it, but when we get in there and we really start praying, something begins to happen on the inside of us. When we start seeing, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me through. I thank you, God. I thank you that you got me up today. I thank you, God. I know my kids get on my nerves sometimes, but I thank you, God, that you bless me with them. I thank you, God, for providing for them. I thank you, God, that you gave me the strength to put up with them and to, and to be able to raise them in the godly way. Like, I, I know that they might not be living right right now, but, Lord, I praise you for your protection that's upon them. And I praise you, Lord, for the times that I got up in the middle of the night and I prayed over them, God. And I will not give up because because I've got the power. I've got the power to get through it, and they have the power to get through it. So I'm going to keep praising you, God. See, see, I'm a little old school when it comes to prayer, but I remember the day when people would run to church to pray. I remember having 24-hour prayer vigils in the middle of the night. People would be signing up on the chart in the, in the foyer. We couldn't even get everybody's name on the little chart of who was doing what time because everybody came running into church. What would happen? we start opening our mouths so much, ladies and gentlemen, that we couldn't wait to get in the house of the Lord. And when it came to prayer time, I wouldn't have to say, would anybody like to come up and come pray? Let's come up front. Let's pray for each other. No, it would be everybody running to the front because everybody has a need and everybody feels overwhelmed and everybody feels depressed someday. But what would happen if we really were real and honest and got back to the way we used to pray? We didn't care about who was looking, who was watching. We didn't care about how are we going to pray. I don't know how to pray. Just open your mouth. Talk to him. Just like you talked to everybody else. I met with this person. Well, I met with a lot of people this week, and everybody had the same thing. Everybody's overwhelmed. Everybody feels tormented by the enemy, and I just don't know what to do. And why does all these things keep happening to me? I said, well, have you talked to the Lord about it? No. He knows. Well, just because he knows don't mean you can't tell him how you feel. Well, one person I was talking to was upset, crying. 
Well, I've just tried everything, and I just don't know why I'm not getting any better at this, and I just don't know. Well, have you talked to the Lord about it? No. What do you mean? Well, it's okay to share your frustrations with them. It's opening your mouth. You can say, God, I lay this before you. I don't know why this isn't happening to me for me, but, Lord, I'm going to keep pressing through. Lord, whatever you want me to do, God, it's not been easy, but, but it's just opening our mouth and laying it out. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to say, why haven't you come through yet? Because it's all a part of opening our mouth and communicating with him. And we, it's better than keeping our mouth shut shut and let the enemy destroy us in our thoughts. But it's getting back in the presence of God and praying. I'm talking about some good old praying. Services where you pray. I'm talking about people praying. I mean praying. I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean fasting and praying. Like, I mean like some serious straight up praying. And, and this week I found myself I found myself at work, and I told Raw, I said, I said, you know what? I believe it's time. He said, what? I said, I believe it's time that I start. I don't know if you want to join me, brother, but it'd be good. But we, we need to start fasting and praying because God needs to do some things up in this place. There are some things that we've been praying for. There's some people that we need to step up. And I said, I believe that we need to start praying. I mean, you know, this ain't ours to fight on our own. Come on. We, we, need, we need God. To, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we need to start praying again. And open our mouth and asking God to help us. He said, open your mouth. And, and prayer requires opening our mouth. Supplication, it requires words. And, and when, you, when you're silent, right, silent people who don't speak against the scenario don't change their scenario. You have to understand that prayer requires words. And when you are not using your words to speak against your scenario, come on, your scenario overcomes you as opposed to you overcoming your scenario. You've got to learn to speak. we got to get back to praying. You know, and I think sometimes people don't come to church because they don't feel entertained. Right? They, you know, well, you know, it's the lights for me, Pastor Dana. I just love them. I got to have the lights. I got to have the blue in the background. Oh, okay. Gotta have, I got to have the song on the screen. Like, I need that, you know. Well, I tell you what. You got to open your mouth, praise God. Don't matter what kind of lights. Don't matter what kind of drummer you got. Don't matter what kind of guitar player who can lead better than who or whatever. It that don't matter. It's about opening our mouth and giving God praise and giving him thanksgiving. I'm going to tell you something, y'all. I tell you, I, when I, the first time I went into prison, they, ain't got, they don't have lights like this. They, they, man, they don't have what we have. And all I could hear was them crying out to God, praising God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise you, Father. Praising God up there trying to sing. Bless their heart. Some of them can't sing, but, but, they're, but they're singing. They don't have a lot of instruments, but they're singing. They're opening their mouth. They're doing something. And some of us have all we can do to come into church and barely lift our hands because we're so depressed. Man, it doesn't stop them. It doesn't stop them. Some of them have been there for years. Some of them their whole entire life, everything been taken for them. You think about the regret and the shame and the guilt that they live in, but they still open their mouth and they still praise God. I'm just saying, if you feel a little anxious, you feel a little depressed, hey, you could just open your mouth and start praising God. I wonder what's the last time you had a Holy Ghost fit? When was the last time that you started walking around your house just, you know, going off, man, lifting your hands up, praising God, and just declaring that things are going to happen in your life? You may not see it happen. You may not feel it happening, but when you get that desperate for God, come on. When you are, man, you got to pray over your kids. You got to get in that room and get ready to go back to school. Get ready to go back to some tough things. And the thought of that, man, just makes my heart ache. Man, and just praying over them. Praying over them. Get in their room. When they're not there, take a bucket of Crisco oil. Spray that bad boy up in there. Yeah, done that too, Miss Val. Put that clean axe with that oil right up underneath that pillow. Come on. Pray over them. They need it now more than ever. So we've got to open our mouths. We've got to get back praying. We don't need all this fancy stuff. We just need to be in his presence. Y'all, okay, I'm closing out right now. Number four, worry can't stay in your head if worship stays in your heart. 
Worry can't stay in your head if worship stays in your heart. He tells us, you don't be anxious for anything. Make your requests known. Thanksgiving, prayer, all that good stuff. And then he turns around and he says, and the peace of God. Which, man. See, once you tap into the peace of God, mm, it's good stuff, y'all. It's almost better than the banana cake. I'm just saying. The peace of God. He tells us that the peace of God that can come over us when we feel like we have anxiety is by controlling what we think. It's telling us, he tells us, the things that we need to think on. Let's just be real. I mean, chances are we're not thinking on all those things. That's why we're anxious. But he tells us, he gives us a great prescription, if only we would use it sometimes. He says, think about these things, the things that are true, noble, praiseworthy. Man, he says, those are the things that you need to do. And he says, that's how worship stays on you. That's how you can lift your head up. That's, that's how you can praise God is because you have the peace. And so I just want to encourage you. That's going to take some hard work. But, but we can do it. And, you know, in my own life, I'll let him talk for, I'll let the enemy talk a little bit. Probably sometimes longer than I should on some days. And after a while, I get mad. I think, you know what, this is dumb. Why am I listening to all this mess playing in my head? I, man, this is ridiculous. What is wrong with me? And I have to say, I have to tell the enemy like it is. And my kids are like, who you talk to? And my mom softened herself again. No, I'm not. I'm straight up in the war zone. I'm just straight up telling him to get somewhere. I'm straight up telling him, no, I don't want to believe those things. No, that's not true. No, I don't want that. You know why? Because I want peace in my life. I got to let things go sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It's not about who's right, who's wrong. Just let them be, man. Just, just focus on Jesus and he'll take care of the rest. It's getting our minds the way they should be. And so I want to prepare you for that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to get out of here and be like, praise Jesus. And then you're going to get in the car. You'll be on your way home looking at that window. And a thought will come. And that problem, that thing that's been worrying you is going to come back. But it's saying, uh-uh. I know who I serve. I know that I have the power. Just think of me. It's getting, it's getting. Hey, you'll be dancing in the car. Like, I've got the power, Right? I can do this. I can overcome this. I don't have to believe this. I know it's bad, but I know that God works all things out for my good. And I know that he is working behind the scenes. Will you stand with me? Go ahead and just give God some good praise up in here. Go ahead and get a loud shout that you can. Hey, I want to, hey, again, I want to open this altar up. If you need prayer, come on down because, you know, we got to open our mouth if we want help, right? We got to pray. So I want to encourage you to come on, uh, come on up if you need prayer today. We'd be glad to pray over you. If you could bow your heads, the rest of you don't want to get out of your seat, just bow your heads. Maybe today you just say, Pastor Dana, that was for me. Anybody today? Yeah, yeah, see hands up everywhere. Yeah. How many of you say, Pastor Dana, I just, man, I just, I want some peace. I want some rest. Yep, yep. Father God, we lift our hands today and we declare in the name of Jesus that the enemy will no longer torment us. Lord, we are more than conquerors through you. And so, God, we come against anything that's keeping us up, any worry, any anxiety. Lord, we cast it to you right now, God. And we want to, we just want to just focus in on our thinking, Lord, because we know, Lord, that sometimes it takes us writing scriptures down on a sticky note and plastering that bad boy on everywhere we go in our house, in our car. Lord, sometimes it takes getting up a, a little extra early so that we can just read some scriptures and stand on the promises of God. Lord, what, whatever it is, Lord, 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 we want to think on good things, God. We want to live in peace. And so, Lord, whatever it is today that's weighing us down, Lord, we, 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 we release it in the name of Jesus. We are no longer carrying it, God. We believe that you're able to help us. In Jesus' name, and everybody said.